Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today I want to review the Wearbands training aid that I've been using for quite a while. And the team behind Wearbands actually contacted me after seeing that I'm using it in one of my videos. And they asked me for a review. So keep in mind this is a sponsored review, but I've been using Wearbands for quite a while before the team asked me to do it. So I'm using it the wear bands in a specific way. I want to show you how I use it for tennis stroke corrections. So the wear bands typically are used for activation of muscles or to increase the intensity because you can also connect the bands from this belt to your ankles and you're training your legs in various sports. So this is not just a tennis specific product. This is a product for all sorts of sports where you want to provide resistance and increase the intensity of the workout. And I used this also with juniors for those purposes, but I want to show you a different purpose today because lately I've been teaching mostly adult recreational tennis players and I don't want to run them around and strain them with resistance training, but I do use the wear bands for stroke correction, so for technique corrections. So in today's video, I want to show you how I will use wear bands for correcting forehand, backhand, two-handed backhand, volleys, and even the serve. So I'm going to start with a simple example of player hitting a forehand and dropping their arm down so that their non-dominant arm is not functioning the right way on the forehand. So there are various options. You can teach the player to catch the racket in order to have good shoulder rotation or even if they don't catch it, if the arm is coming somewhere here, that's still okay. But we do want the non-dominant arm to be active and some, somewhat parallel, roughly at the same height as the hitting arm. And so one of the common mistakes that players do is that even though they might prepare well with the arm here, then the arm drops down and they're hitting like this. And so they don't have good shoulder rotation and this arm is kind of lost in space and they don't have good ball control. So now when we detect this technical flaw, we want to correct it. So there are three ways we are correcting players in all sports. We have the visual way so we can demonstrate to them or even better, we use video analysis, ideally with a tablet and a video analysis app on the court so that we can immediately show them what's the problem. Then the other way is so-called kinesthetic way, so we try to help them feel the wrong way and the right way, and that's where the wear bands comes in. And the third way is so-called auditory way, so we just explain to the player what's wrong. Yes. Just slice it. That's right. Make it float with backspin. Right? And obviously the last one is the least effective in correcting the player's technique, but unfortunately used the most if you look around tennis courts. So the most effective ways of correcting technique are visual and kinesthetic and ideally combination of both. So if I'm trying to correct the player kinesthetically, helping them feel how to use this arm correctly, then I did use resistance bands quite some time ago, but the problem was that the player was static and attached there to the post. So how I used to correct the non-working, non-dominant arm when it was falling down, I would use like a typical resistance band you can buy on Amazon or any other sports store, just a light one, and I would attach it like this, and then I would throw the ball. So right now my assistant, Tina, is throwing me balls so I can demonstrate and I would ask the player to go like this so that they feel so they can start here and then they're playing the ball and that they feel this so we hold position a little bit so we would hit a few balls here in an awkward position like usually you don't have anything to attach on the side on the court so you have to come in some awkward small space try and hit and swing under the the band and so on and so it's complicated at first and then also as soon as the player does a few repetitions 
and they go back to the baseline and you give them balls, they will likely immediately kind of revert back to their old habit because it's so deeply ingrained. And so that's where wear bands comes in because, again, it provides the resistance that you can use for corrections and you can wear them so you can move around and constantly have this kinesthetic feedback of whether you're doing the movement correctly or not. So here's how you wear the wear bands. It's very simple. Uh, you just strap this belt around your waist. And then, so for this particular way how I'm using it, I basically use the hands and gloves only. I don't use for legs unless I really want the player to come down. So that's it. You just put your hand in. It's a Velcro tape here and that's it. I'm ready to practice. And then it's also very easy to take off. So I will show you my protocol, my system. So I have the player hit some shots with the gloves on so that they feel the resistance. Then we just take it off, put it in the pocket, hit a few without and then wear again. So alternating a little bit and that's a very quick, very quick way to put the glove on and off. So if we continue with correcting the example of non-dominant arm not working right and I want to use wear bands to correct that, then I would just have the player wear this on their non-dominant arm. This arm is free, you can just put the, the glove in the pocket, maybe you will need it later for another correction. And I would hit some balls. So when I ask the player to correct, I would always ask them to hold a little bit in the finish. So right now what we are correcting is the mistake where the arm falls down. So now I want them to come here and catch the racket. So I would just feed them nice balls and have them hold the finish here. Maybe around 15 to 20 balls I would use the, the wear bands for so that they have a good sensation, good activation of the right muscles. And after about 15 to 20 balls I would ask the player to put the glove in the pocket. You can see it's like just a few seconds. And now we want to see if they have some sensation if they can do it better or not better so without help because the the wear bands is helping you feel the right uh, muscles the right activation so we do it a bit without so again i would go for about 15 to 20 balls and then wear the glove again to stimulate the right muscles to activate so that would be set number two. So again, this system again, I would hit maybe 15, 20 balls like this. So I'm just going a bit faster that you can see. And again, I would do it without and see how the player does without. So that's kind of stage one. So with adult players, I would usually go for maybe two sets and with juniors, I would go for three sets. So one set means about 15 balls with the wear bands and 15 balls without and do it twice. So that's like 60 balls in a row. So that would be just like one quick practice session, stimulate and then possibly for again for adult player, have them play a little bit. So in a live rally, have them play with the wear bands on. And for, junior, for juniors, I would add another set, so another 15 to 20 with the wear bands and without. And then you would repeat this for a few sessions and observing how the progress is. So sometimes the progress is fast, sometimes it's not. It depends on the player and how long they have been playing the wrong way. So you have to observe and keep doing what needs to be done in order to correct the technical flaw. The second common mistake on the forehand when it comes to the non-dominant arm is that players don't coil well, they don't stretch these muscles well, they don't put the arm well across. So they're kind of preparing like this. So let me show one or two examples. So the, the player not only does not prepare, not catch, they simply kind of just 
are like this, so we want them to coil better, have good preparation, so that they can have good rotation from here. And so for a few times with the player, if I'm correcting that, I would just ask them to hold this because they're going to feel the resistance of this band and that will activate these shoulder muscles that need to be active in the preparation. So when they feel this, so I would ask them to hold for a second and then I would feed the ball and then they hit. So again, hold a little bit and hit. And then I would follow the same protocol as before about 15, 20 balls with wear bands, then without, then with and without, and then possibly with playing. So for correction number three on the forehand, we are using the, the glove and the elastic band on the hitting arm, the dominant arm, and not on this one. And so the, the flaw, the technical flaw that we want to correct is a very short follow through, a very tight follow through, elbow not going away from the body like this, but just kind of like this. So. Let me demonstrate the incorrect way. So if players are kind of hitting like this, then you can also see right now when I'm wearing the wear bands and the elastic band that this one is not tightening, I'm not extending it. So if we want to correct this to bring the elbow higher up and extend more, then we ask the player to extend the elastic band in the follow through and of course they're gonna feel that because you have to beat the band to beat the resistance and again you start using the right muscles in the shoulder and I would ask players to hold the finish a little bit again like this but this time we're hitting we're using the the dominant arm and activating the right muscles for extending the follow through so again this is just an exaggeration you don't have to finish like this when you play tennis, eventually you can swing through. So eventually the forehand can be like this, whatever the style of the player, but we do want the player to extend further. And this is one very simple way of correcting them in a very efficient and effective way. One of the more common mistakes on the one-handed backhand is that when players hit, they don't extend the arm fully, but they tend to break the arm here. So they're hitting more like this. They're breaking in the elbow and sometimes also in the wrist. Here's an example of how backhand looks like. So players are hitting like this. And if we want to correct that, we can use the wear bands and ask the player to really extend and stretch the band at the end of the follow through. And so they will have to fight the band again. They will feel the resistance and that starts to give them the right feel. So again, follow the same protocol, 15 to 20 balls with the band, take it off, put it back on and see how that works after a few sessions of correcting. The second most common mistake on the one-handed backhand is that players might be extending the arm, the hitting arm well, but their non-dominant arm is not active, so it just kind of tends to hang down. And we don't want that because we need to make a counter movement when we're hitting the one-handed backhand in order to stop the rotation. So we don't want to rotate like this through the backhand. And in order to stop the rotation, one way to stop the rotation that we stay more sideways is to create this counter movement. So this arm forward and this one backward. So that's why we want it, we want this movement. And if players don't have it, we can give them a good sensation for that with the wear bands. So let me show you a couple of examples of doing it wrong. So when I'm not using the, this arm right, then I will tend to over rotate because this rotation is gonna pull me over. And this arm you see is just here. So when we wear the wear bands, we ask the player to really stretch this band, beat the band and hold the position. So now I'm hitting and holding the position maybe for about two seconds. And that gives the player kinesthetic feel, feedback on what they should be doing with their non-dominant arm. Because many times, especially for non-dominant arms, 
it's difficult to correct because the player becomes so immersed or so mesmerized by looking after their own shot. So when they hit the ball, their focus immediately goes there and they stop paying attention to their own body. So if we're just correcting them verbally and telling them what to do, they're usually not doing a good job because their focus shifts. And so when we give them a feel-based training aid, then even though they're looking after the ball, they will get feedback here whether they're stretching or not. Sometimes you have to remind them again, but uh, this is one of the best ways to correct the incorrect non-dominant arm on the one-handed backhand. And finally, on one-handed backhand, it's really good to use both elastic bands, so both gloves, because both arms have to work uh, simultaneously in a similar manner. So they're both extending, just this one goes a bit higher in the follow-through, it goes high, this one goes lower. But they both have to pull away from the body and we want to engage the shoulder muscles and here the back muscles. These are the right muscles to engage, to activate when hitting the one-handed backhand. So it's a really good exercise if you use both elastic bands on one-handed backhand and players learn very fast, they're getting really good feedback on both sides of the body, on both arms, how they should be engaging the muscles. So, obviously, you know that my channel is called Feel Tennis and one of the reasons why I call my channel Feel Tennis is because I teach a lot through feel. I use a lot of feel-based exercises, elastic bands, and other things to help the player feel the right movement when I'm correcting their technique. And that's why I really love wear bands because they allow the player to move around. You can see I can move around, I can correct my position. You can even play and still work on your technique. On the two-handed back and usually there is not a problem with coiling because both arms are on the racket. So players turn quite well, usually coiling is not a problem. But one of the main technical flaws or mistakes that players do is that when they hit, they bend the hitting arm too quickly, so they're kind of going from contact point right into the follow-through and they don't go through the extension phase. So to correct that, we put the glove on the non-dominant arm and we ask the player to hit a few times with the extended arm here, so without follow-through, so that they feel this engagement, this activation and extending the elastic band. So first I will show incorrect, so players hit the ball and immediately bend like this. So, when I do this, I basically feel almost no stretching of the elastic band because I'm coming so short. So that's the usual mistake and the correction with the wear bands is to extend like this and hold for a few seconds. Hold for a couple of seconds and that activates the right muscles. So I would stay with this correction for a while before allowing the player to go back behind the, the, over the shoulder. I would stay with this. And again, just hold a little bit at the end and later on they can continue like this. So <clears throat> this is very, again, very effective way of correcting technical flaws that works way, way faster than just telling the player what's wrong. We can use the wear bands also to correct the backhand slice so what tends to happen when players do it the wrong way is that they chop too much down like this. So let me show you an example of how players, so they're kind of chopping down and doing this kind of movements, something like this. And obviously that doesn't go anywhere. So what we want them to do is we want them to extend the arm, also the non-dominant arm, and again, the wear bands helps the player feel this extension because as they're going this way, they will feel resistance and they try to beat the band. So I use that phrase a lot, to beat the band. You have to fight it. If you don't beat the band, you kind of come to here and now the band beat you. And so we don't want that. So we don't want the player to kind of do like this. And now I feel the resistance of the band and I didn't beat it. So I have to go through that resistance and extend. So that's 
one very good way of correcting the back and slice technique for the dominant arm. And the same principle applies to back and slice. So the same principle as it applies to one-handed back and both arms have to work in the opposite way. So we can use both elastic bands and both gloves. So when I'm hitting the slice, I want to pull apart. So that's one phrase that I use, pull apart and stretch elastic bands. And that is gonna help the player get into the right technique. So always hold position a little bit to exaggerate the feeling, the sensation. And after some repetitions, you take again the gloves off, try again how it goes back on and so on. So after a few sessions, there should definitely be an improvement in the back and slice technique. One of the common mistakes on the volley is that players don't extend enough when they're hitting the ball. So they're kind of chopping similar to back and slice. So let me show you the mistake first. So players are kind of doing something like this. They hit and it's short, too short. As you can see, I, even I don't have good control. So it's something like this. Everything is too soft. And so we can use the, the wear bands to ask the player to really extend after the ball. So in the direction of where they're hitting. And again, I, I will feel resistance. I have to beat the band. I'm fighting the resistance. So I try to stay long with the volley. And that's, again, a very effective way of correcting the, the volley technique. So it applies to both strokes. So on the volley, usually I don't work much so much with uh, wear bands on the non-dominant arm. I just kind of focus on this one as long as this one is not coming here or the players are not over rotating. So it usually is not a big problem to correct quickly the non-dominant arm even without any training aids. But this tends to happen a lot on the volleys. And so when we ask the player to extend, so we can also do without the racket, start here and just extend here and hold position so that they realize that it's a simple move, movement of just extending and holding. And it works very quickly. So again, another benefit of using the wear bands in many situations for many strokes with simple principles that can work forehand or backhand side. So on the forehand side, common mistake on the forehand volley is again, players don't extend. They're kind of chopping like this down, slicing across. Then as you can see this happens. It's not a clean move. The racket goes down too quickly. Then you frame the ball. So you can correct that by extending long. You use the, the band, elastic band to feel and ask the player to feel the extension in the direction of the target. So whether they're going down the line here or I'm going cross court there, want to feel full extension of the elastic band. And that's another very effective way of correcting technique without too much talking and confusing the player. They feel what they need to do and they can correct very quickly. Can you use the wear bands for correcting the surf? Not so much for surf technique, I prefer for the hitting arm, I prefer to use throwing and swinging exercises, but I use it for the toss, for correcting the toss, because there are two typical mistakes that players do on the toss. One is that when they toss the ball, the arm immediately starts bending, so they're tossing something like this, and then their toss is inconsistent, so that's one, or they might have a straight arm when they're tossing, but their arm immediately collapses down. So they're doing something like this and serving the ball. So they can toss here fine, but then they collapse the arm too quickly and the ball goes in the net. So with the wear bands on the non-dominant arm, we practice holding the position of the toss. So I would ask, the player to go a few times just like this in the trophy position and catch the ball. And again, we are exaggerating a bit this sensation of extending the arm. So correcting the first mistake, extending the arm and also not collapsing the arm too quickly, but holding it up. So 
I would ask the player to do this 10 to 15 times, ideally catch the ball back and then serve. And then you take the glove off, put in the pocket and serve without it and see if the feel is there. So in conclusion, I hope you got a new insight into how you can use the wear bands, not only for activation and intensity training, but also for stroke correction in case of tennis strokes. I have the wear bands all the time in my tennis bag because I never know when I need it. And the way I teach a lot through feel, it's very useful training aid for me. I use it all the time to correct. Uh, I am a bit tired of talking and telling the players what to do for the thousand time after that many years of teaching. And so am I always looking to find the most effective ways of teaching. So not only for me that I don't get bored or frustrated too quickly, but also for the player because they paid for a lesson and they would like results. And in this day and age, they want results quickly. And the fastest way to give players results in terms of technique correction is in a combination of video analysis and feel-based kinesthetic training aids. So wear bands is wonderful for me. Uh, as you saw, I can use them just in some isolated situations where the player is standing and practicing, but also because they can wear the wear bands, they can play actually, stay in a rally and work on their technique while hitting the ball, which is the final goal that we want. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.